look at this. That is just so awesome that this is a feature now. If you're ever curious and want to get a heads up onto some of the newest features coming to Premiere Pro, the easiest way that I know of is to look at the Premiere Pro beta and see the what's new section. If you don't have Premiere Pro beta, go to your Creative Cloud app and go to apps here inside the uh, window and then download Premiere Pro beta. Once that's downloaded, open it up and in the top right corner, you have a beaker and you can see what's new in the beta. You click that and you're met with a window that can rate the features that they've implemented into Premiere Pro. One of the first ones here is actually one that's already in Premiere Pro, the new UI Adobe Spectrum Design. I'm actually gonna bring up the full version of Premiere Pro because you can access this now. In your settings, appearance, here we have darkest, which is what you're probably accustomed to, dark, and light. <laughs> now, you also have an accessible color contrast. If you have a situation that arises where you need to use something like this, I'm glad it's there now, but I'm just gonna keep mine on uh, darkest and take that off. Now, like I said, some of these have already been implemented into Premiere Pro. I've gone over the new color management system in a previous video, as well as rounded corners. In fact, if you're using Premiere Pro now, you already know about those things because it's inside the newest version of Premiere Pro. I was perusing this menu and there was one that really caught my eye and I wanna talk about that one first. It's right here. Dynamic audio waveforms, scale to waveform of the audio clip when adjusting volume and channel volume. And I read this and immediately went to my timeline. Look at this. That's a beautiful sight. That is just so awesome that this is a feature now. If you don't see what's going on. I'll hold command here, create another keyframe, create a keyframe like this. And the waveforms now scale to reflect you turning down the volume of the clip. Even in the full version of Premiere Pro, that didn't happen before. It seems almost counterintuitive that this wasn't a part of Premiere Pro for so long, but it's there now. I can remember almost like a decade ago when I was learning on Pro Tools, and I saw that feature implemented from, I think, version 7.4 to 8, and it blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, whoa, we can move the waveforms when we change the lines? It's a small feature, but it is a very welcome feature, especially from me. I Thank you so much, engineers at Adobe. So the next one that I've seen being marketed by Adobe is this new search panel with visual search. The first thing that I want to point out is I went up here to the media search at the top right, what it says to do, and I clicked it. Now, at first, it did not work because I needed to go up here to settings and then underneath media analysis and transcription, you need to analyze all imported media to visually search your projects. This was not checked off in my project. It's that way by default. So I had to check this in order for this feature to work. Once that's checked, it takes a little bit of time to ingest all of that footage into its whole library. You can go over here, you can search by everything, but now we have visuals. So for this, I'm just gonna type coffee. If I were to click on one, it brings it up in the source. Now you might see the same clip over and over again, and that's because I have that clip distributed or I might have an in and an out and have that clip in multiple folders for some reason. But one thing that I didn't realize that happens is you can search for something. So here we have a sequence and if I double click this, it automatically takes me to that clip inside my sequence. Let me find a different one. So there, it took my playhead to that spot in the sequence. And it's not just for one sequence. These are all in version 3.7, which was probably my final version. But here I click, and this is a completely different sequence. Oh, this is my selects reel, or starting to do my selects reel. And that's all the coffee. Blue glasses. There we go. Blue. <laughs> There's blue glasses. Grass. Or actually, let's do... Train. I mean, even in the time, you can see these are different ones that I already looked up. There's train. It works really well. <laughs> I can only imagine all those times where, one, I want to find something that 
I can only remember, oh, I remember I had a shot of that camera. Or two, you have a producer behind you and they're like, hey, we're missing that one shot of the one camera and we need that as B-roll right here. And you can just go to this visual search and type it in, speed up your video editing process tenfold. But I think you get the whole point. Uh, you can search for visuals. You could also search for everything. But I think the big thing here is that you can search visually inside Premiere Pro now. Another one that I saw here was Anchor Point Quick Set. Instantly snap anchor points to standard locations with a new UI accessible in the properties panel or by keyboard shortcut. Now this one, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. The anchor point, we can move around. Now, one thing that was always a part of Premiere Pro is if you hold command on Mac and maybe control on Windows, it would automatically snap the anchor point to the middle. Now, I could also snap it to any of the corners like this, but this is a feature that's already been a part of Premiere Pro. If I were to go over here to this full version of Premiere Pro, here I have a clip, I have highlighted anchor point, and if I move this around and hold Command on Mac, and I'm assuming it's Control on Windows, but correct me if I'm wrong there, it will lock to any of the corners or middle points inside the clip. If I had to guess, hopefully it's something like when you're inside After Effects, and if you go over here to create a layer, so I'm gonna create a shape. Notice that when I create the shape, the anchor point is centered to the composition middle, not the middle of the shape layer. And if I were to go over here, hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows on the Pan Behind tool, double click, it automatically sets the anchor point to the middle of the shape layer. Hopefully it's something like that, or I've seen little menus where you can click and automatically set the anchor point to any of these corners or midpoints just by a little menu. Any of that would be really cool inside Premiere Pro and a welcome addition. Curious to see what it's gonna be though. There are some other video Kodak things in here that if you're interested in those, just go read this list. Uh, of note is the H.264 streams in an MKV wrapper support. I, there was something up here about 4228-bit, 42010-bit media files, um, things like that. The only other one of note that I could see that wasn't like that was the Facebook Reels published destination. I don't really use that, but let's see if we got a Facebook Reels already inside. So type post, oh yeah, Reel. So yeah, you can post to Facebook Reels. If you're checking this video out in the near future, there's probably already some new features in that what's new section. So I encourage you to check it out as well. If this video was helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. My name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.